Thank you. Please raise your hands if you've ever had to make a difficult decision. <laughs> we've got everybody there. Just to check, please raise your hands if you've never had to make a difficult decision. Okay, so consensus is we've all at some point in our life had to make at least one, if not a lot more, difficult decisions. And decisions can be frustrating, they can be stressful, and particularly if we're making them under pressure, which in our day-to-day -day lives, in organisations, you know, making choices for our careers, we're always faced with these decisions. Well, what if we could tap into a way that would make these decisions more comfortable for us, a lot easier and a lot less stressful. And there is a way we can do that. By honouring and trusting our intuition, we make conscious choices that are the right choice each time and every time. And I'd like to share with you a little bit later a model that, um, after quite a bit of sort of research looking back on my own life, because I've made some pretty huge decisions that most people would consider life-changing. I've also worked with quite a lot of leaders in organisations, and I'm just fascinated by the way that people make decisions. Uh, and it was really, really inspiring hearing sort of Christoph and talking about, you know, how do you know when you've got the right spot? You know, sometimes things don't feel right, and sometimes they just do. Well, there is something in us that tells us that. Sometimes we listen to it, and sometimes, maybe, we haven't. When I think back to probably one of the biggest intuitive decisions that I've made, it was about 2004, and I was working in the city of London, and I was a global training manager for a banking software company, which from the outside was great. You know, jo has got this great job. She's in the city of London and she gets to travel the world. I was traveling to places I'd never been before and seeing lots of hotels and insides of planes. And I loved it for a while. And my work schedule became increasingly heavy. My bags became increasingly heavy because I was not carrying normally only one laptop, but two plus my luggage um, quite a lot of shoes in there as well. <laughs> and I was getting tired. And I was thinking, I don't really know what I was thinking, to be honest, but I wasn't enjoying myself. And it certainly wasn't my passion. And I used to see a chiropractor initially, just sort of, you know, twice a year. But my visits to her got more and more regular until it got to the point where visiting my chiropractor was kind of my safe haven. And I'd go along to her, she had this lovely basement apartment in London, and you'd go down the stairs and feel like you'd left the rest of London behind, and she'd always have like the candles burning, and you sort of go into this haven to be treated and pushed around a bit. Um, I remember lying there one day, and she said to me, Jo, what are you doing? She said, you're always tired. You're always telling me that you never see your friends and family, that your health is suffering. And you come in here nearly every week now. I was thinking, I'm probably just becoming my therapist. I don't know. <laughs> um, but it was, she said, you know, what is it? What is it? What are you going to do? And I lay there and I said, I'm going to become a coach. She said, oh, that's good. I said, is it? Well, I don't know where that came from. I had no idea where those words came from. And as I was leaving her apartment that day, usually I turned left to go to the tube station to go back to the office. But I turned right, because Kensington Park was that way, and it was a lot more appealing than my office. So I went there, and it was a beautiful spring day, it was March, and I sat in the park, and there was the squirrels running around, and all the spring flowers were blooming, 
And I think I had a bit of a life-changing moment. And these words are going through my head. I want to be a coach. What does that mean? I don't even know where to start. But something came to me out of nowhere. And it was quite a profound moment. And from that, I went home. But I'd gone from this sort of tug of war of this, you know, I'm doing my job, it's a good job, I'm getting paid really well, and I'm traveling the world, to there's more in me, there's more in me. And something was trying to tell me something, but I wasn't listening. And it just felt like this tug of war. You know, maybe you've had those sorts of feelings yourself. So this something that was talking to me, and for me, I'm sort of going here because it was sort of, I sort of feel it here, was my intuition. And I have learned that the more and more you trust it to make decisions, the more and more it will serve you. I can see you're already good at intuitive decisions anyway because you're here today. So something has, um, inside you has, has brought you here. Or maybe it was the person next to you that sort of brought you along or, or whatever it is. And you may not at this point know why you're here. It might be that you get a key message. I would hope that you get a lot of inspiring messages. I certainly have already this morning. But it might be that one month, two months, a year down the line, you think back to today and think, oh, it was that person that said that. Now I get what triggered this, 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 and this. But the more we can tap into it and listen to it when it shows itself in the here and now, the easier our lives and our decision-making will be. So what is intuition and where does it come from? For me, that day in the chiropractor's treatment room, I just got this voice out of nowhere and I just said it out. You know, and sometimes it's a feeling. And I'm always curious when I speak to groups to find out sort of where people get their intuitions from. So I'll just take a bit, of a, a bit of a poll, if I may. How many of you get a voice in your head? For those of you that hasn't, haven't raised your hand, that, it's that voice at the moment that's telling you. <laughs> it's that one. How many of you get a feeling? Or maybe it's something in your body, something physical. And if at this point you're not sure what I'm talking about with intuition, I just say to you, start listening to your body. There's something going on for you right now going, it's here, it's here, it's this. And it might not just be one way. Now, Christoph talked just now about meditation. You know, I always meditate, and I find that is a great way of getting intuitions and inspiring thoughts. And it might be through writing. So there are, there are various different ways it can, it can come to you. But what do we do with that intuition when we have it? Now, maybe you've been in a situation where you've met somebody. And you either get a really great feeling, you know, like when I met Deborah, I thought, yeah, you know, we're going to be friends for life and great lady, so really good feeling. Or you meet somebody and you think, oh, I can't quite put my finger on this, but something doesn't feel quite right here. Interesting, there's more heads nodding at the second one. And if it's a good feeling, we just trust it and go along with it. And if it's a bad feeling, Actually stop and think, I'm not going to continue this conversation, I'm going to go this way. I was working with somebody the other day, and she said, Joe, you know, please help me, because I really want to trust people, and I've stopped trusting people. And what had happened, this lady who we'll call Sarah, she'd had one incident whereby she'd had a bad experience. She said, I've always prided myself on having really good intuition. And she'd been in a situation where she'd been promised the earth by somebody to go in partnership in a business and been working with this guy for a year and the company actually went bankrupt. 
And he turned up one Monday morning in a coffee shop and told her this and, and walked away. And she said, you know, I trusted him with everything. She said, and it went bankrupt. And I said, we know you've given me all these great examples of how you're really good with intuition. What stopped you there? And she said, you promised me a million pound share in the business within a year. She said, my success was driving me more than my intuition. She said, because when I look back, something didn't feel right. Now, and I invite you to start looking at things that have happened and draw from these and bring it into the present. And as I mentioned, I'd like to share with you a model, a quite a simple model of, of how you can do that. So, we have our intuition, however that may come to us. And I all of a sudden got this voice in my head about becoming a coach. Then we have to make it conscious. So by setting a conscious intention, we make it real. I want to become a coach. For me, became I'm becoming a coach. I went home and started taking action. Five days later, I'm actually attending an open day to do a professional coaching diploma. From setting that intention and declaring it and putting my stake in the ground, a whole lot of opportunities opened up. And when you set an intention, it can't help but go round in a cycle. Because from me declaring that, something then happened about where do I do my coaching study. And I started getting more intuitions based on what I just stated. And then we bring them around and make them conscious again. And I'll expand on this a little bit more and give you some examples on it. But I invite you to think about some intentions or some things that maybe are inside of you that you want to bring out. As I was studying my coaching diploma, I decided that this was the time for me to leave this uh, great career. Um, and through many intuitions and engineering my redundancy from the company I worked at, um, I just left. The very next day, I got a phone call from the owner of the coaching college, just left my, my company. And he said, Joe, we're expanding overseas. I know you've done some work in Dubai. Would you come over on an exploratory visit? Can you take a week off work? And I, well, funny that, I left yesterday. So this happened the very next day I'd quit my job. I went through a whole washing machine of emotions of what am I doing, am I giving this up and I'm suddenly going to set this business up and I don't quite know how it's going to work. I went out to Dubai with him, he paid for my trip, gave him a proposal and said whoever sets the business up out here, this is just my, my view, I've only had a few visits here, it's just my view. He said, well I was thinking you could do it. I said, what? He said, well think about it for a few days. So I walked out of his office that day going, London, Dubai, London, Dubai, 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 Dubai. Hmm, that felt right. So I went and did it. So again, I set that intention. I was going to create a corporate coaching business in Dubai. And initially I went out there on a joint venture and ultimately, through many intuitions and setting of intentions along the way as to which business opportunities did I take, you know, who did I work with, um, many, many, I was in that part of the world for, for five years. And let me tell you, I didn't always get it right, because the times I didn't get it right was when I didn't listen to this and I didn't make it conscious. And then... About be almost two years ago now, it's 2009, about May, June 2009, been out in, in the Middle East for five years, been a great time living my passion. I loved what I did. You know, I was one of these people that time didn't matter. I was just loving what I was doing, speaking and coaching and, and you know, hopefully making a difference in people's lives. 
And I started getting this feeling inside that something wasn't right. This made no logical sense whatsoever. And it just kept happening. I kept getting funny illnesses. I kept getting colds and sore throats and things going on in my body. So I thought, Joe, give yourself a break. You've been working for 20 <laughs> something years at this time. So I took a sabbatical. I thought, I'm going to take three months off. I'll go and explore. I'll go to America. And I'm on the plane and I'm just writing my thoughts down. And, da, da, da. and I'm moving to the UK. And I almost dropped the pen. I'm thinking, what? No, I'm not moving to the UK. I mean, it rains there, you know, and they pay tax. You know, why would I want to do that? That's ridiculous. So, but it kept coming and coming and coming. And I thought, well, I know enough about this stuff. I know this stuff, Joe. It's what you've been researching. You've got to do something with this. So I said, I'm moving to the UK on the 11th of November, just because I liked the 11th of the 11th. It seemed a good day. Amazing things happened. The work that I had planned in kind of all got moved and people were ringing me up saying, well, that's no longer happening, Joe, and we've got a new manager and it's going to happen next year now. So this gap was created. Um, so I've got to act on this. And this really was a whole tug of war. Because again, this washing machine of emotions is going on in here going, what are you doing? You've got to do it. You've got to move. But... I was passionate about what I was doing. I absolutely loved what I was doing. So I'm like, hmm, this doesn't make sense. And sometimes intuition doesn't. So I moved back on the 11th of November, 2009. On the 13th of November, 2009, I met my partner, Simon. And that was the piece of my life that was missing. I had no idea why I was moving back to the UK. Great stuff also happened with um, my work and having a book published as well. But it was, sometimes you don't know what's going to happen. So just imagine if you had a guide, a protector, and a manifester with you all the time. You do, and it's called your intuition. So learn how to recognize it and trust it. Put your stake in the ground and set your intentions and allow your intuition to feed into those. Thank you very much. <laughs>